Hello everybody, I'm going to be talking about basically uh, recovering dead batteries and uh, some things I've been learning about uh, that whole process. Uh, it's been pretty interesting, I, I've uh, kind of hopefully arranged everything where you can see things clearly. Got all these meters going so you can see the voltages of the different batteries I'm messing around with. And uh, I also uh, added a few more magnets to the wheel, so I've got 18 of them on here now. And they're all spaced 20 degrees apart. And I've been spinning it uh, the other way now, I, I, uh, where it, you know, it draws more current but puts out more energy because I've been getting much better results on the whole battery charging side. I'm getting way more milliamps out of the thing and it's not drawing as much as it was probably because I've you know I've tuned it fairly well and I might be able to lower the the draw end of it some more but it seems to be running really nice right now so I'm just doing some tests and I wanted to share that with you so uh, basically uh, tell you what meters are reading what these two meters here are reading the two batteries that I'm charging at the moment. Uh, this one here which is lower has uh, been the second battery that I've been recovering over the last day and a half or maybe two days not continuously but you know a fair amount and so I'm pretty much you know as you can see right around three quarters of the way there now uh, I believe this started off at about four volts uh, this is the other one that I recovered. Um, it can take a full charge, but it's really low right now because I've been combining both batteries uh, during the charge process. And what happens is the higher voltage battery ends up dropping down um, as that lower one comes up. They sort of equalize, and then eventually they start charging together. But uh, this is showing the battery. Uh, voltage that's charge uh, the charge battery voltage so you know it's about 1245 right now that might drop down quite a bit uh, I've got a power supply that I've been running it off of too uh, just a standard PC power supply when this battery gets low because I'm still kind of testing out uh, all these lower ones and seeing what's going on so I've even thrown that on the charger just to bring it back up again but Anyway, uh, and then this meter here is the uh, draw from the primary, and this is the one sh uh, going to the charge batteries. So that's what's going on there. Uh, so right now I have the two batteries disconnected, so they're showing their separate voltages. And I'll connect them together now so that you can see the combined voltage of the two batteries. And then we'll fire this thing up and I'll kind of show you some different things. Alright. So as you can see now, you know, these two meters are reading differently. But they're both connected to the same circuit. So I've been primarily taking my readings off this one. This is a little bit better meter. and So that's what I'm doing here. So there's the combined voltage both both batteries together and it, it's probably going to drop a little bit because they're trying to equal out each other but I don't know it might be stable because these things have been off for a while anyway so now I'm going to fire this pupster up uh, I'm going to give it a, a pre-spin to cancel out that oscillation thing this way I got to get it I got to give it a little bit more of a push to get the motor running but Also, uh, these the amp meters are both in 10 amp mode, so uh, you know this is like you know eight, is, you know keeps bouncing around, but that's 800 millivolts, and this is 30 millivolts at the moment, or 300 millivolts. I mean, sorry. Right. So it's 800 and 300, or as it's bouncing around. This meter seems to be showing the pulsing a little quicker, I guess. 
which is you want what you want you know that you want that out of this whole circuit is you want to I'm going to be hearing that coil singing, so that means it's pulsing. Anyway, uh, one thing I kind of wanted to show you is when it's charging, right now it's charging two batteries, and, you know, one's obviously really, you know, quite low still, where the other one wants to accept the charge quicker and it is ready to go full charge so it's sort of acting as a buffer zone so watch the watch the amp meters and the voltage when I'm I just charge the one that is in good shape we'll call that R you know the recovered battery that's this one here is so I'm just going to be charging the recovered battery right now and you can, oops I arc those for a second So you can see, the, uh, you know, the voltage of that battery went way up, and so it's going up pretty, pretty quick. And I can, you know, I can sit here, you know, a couple hours or so, probably on this battery because I've drained it so low by doing this balancing thing that, it, you know, I'll, I'll get it back up to full charge. Um, and then, you know, you can see how this one came up, but, you know, will continue to drop down, and then it finally finds its resting, resting point. The other thing is, uh, watching the amp meters, now, it, was, it had quite a difference earlier, these batteries are getting closer. Let me connect these back up again. So you can see, I've noticed a change here where it's actually putting a little more out. And this, this might drop down a little bit. So it draws a little less but puts a little more out is what it seems like it's doing. Let me disconnect this. See how that, that's going back up and this is going down on average because it's, it's pulsing. So I'm going to connect it back up again. And you see now it's putting a little bit more out and drawing a little bit less. So that's kind of interesting. Now, um, what I, the other thing I want to show you is if you just connect a really dead battery to the circuit with, with not the, I'm going to call it the buffer battery behind it, then this thing doesn't put very many amps out at all uh, on on here. It, it, and uh, it's putting a lot of stress on the motor. My neon light starts to flash. Um, whereas right now it's not flashing. It's really hard to see this bulb, so there's no way you guys are probably going to be able to see it. But... Um, With just with it, with just a single dead battery, I guess is is my point is that it stresses the sig uh, this whole circuit out. So by actually having a battery that does have a charge, in other words, charging two batteries at once, that's actually in decent shape, and then the bad one, it it continues to put out the same uh, the the higher uh, amperage, and it slowly brings that uh, dead battery up. So uh, I kind of wanted to show you that too. So uh, let's see. I'm going to kill the circuit for a minute. And I'm going to put my uh, uh, the, char uh, the charge circuit, the charge wires coming off the circuit onto this more dead battery here. So just give me a moment. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to charge the one that's in worse shape. So, this is going. All 
Let me get back up to speed again. Now, kind of as you can see, we're going to be probably drawing drawing more out of the source battery, and it's putting out less overall because this battery is is uh, having a hard time still. You know, we're only three quarters of the way there. So I think that has to do with the um, the impedance of the battery and whatnot. That's what uh, John Bedini was saying, and so I think that's why why actually including the second battery really does help the whole process. I mean, he'll put four or five batteries on there with just one running battery, and and, that, and that's kind of the point. That's kind of what you want to do. You get more more batteries charged in in a relatively similar amount of time. I'm not sure what the math is on that yet, but. Especially once you get the things charged. Anyway, uh, I'm probably going over my time, so I think I'm going to cut it off here and uh, continue in a moment. All right.